Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. I want to let us know that there is a big difference between a female, a woman, and a wife. A female is a creature of a gender. A woman is a matured female. A wife is a gift to a man. So he that finds a wife, not a female, and not a woman, not because those genders, no. A wife is a product of the female gender, and a wife is a product of a matured woman. When we mean matured woman, we're not talking about age right now. We're talking about character. Girls don't marry. It is women who marry. So you can be 50 years and still be a girl. So young men, if you believe in God for marriage, don't you just look for a woman to marry. Believe God for a wife to marry. I've said it before, I'm permitted to say it right now. If you don't marry a wife, you will marry a knife. And woe betide that person who marries a knife. The question now is, who is the person finding a wife? Boys don't look for wives. Wife is a responsibility that only responsible men can handle. So we have male, we have men or man, and then we have husbands. Male are creatures, gender created by God, the opposite of female. Manliness is a symbol of masculinity. Having muscle doesn't make you a, 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 a husband. Six pack does not qualify you to be a husband. But husbands are people of responsibility. So it's not every man that is a husband material. So it takes a husband to locate a wife. A husband is a finished product. Refined by God. God finished with Adam before he thought of giving him a wife. God worked on Adam spiritually, mentally, physically, economically. When Adam was fully ready, it's okay now. You deserve a wife. The woman did not come before Adam named the animals and everything. Adam had finished naming the animals before the woman came. The woman did not come before the garden of Eden was created. The garden was created before the woman came. In other words, when God is giving you a wife, He's not giving you a woman that should come and suffer. He's giving you a woman that should come and enjoy. Huh? That if you don't have a job, don't look for a wife. Don't marry because your wife is working. Marry because you are working. Don't marry because your wife has a, a, a rich, wealthy father. Marry because you are wealthy yourself. Don't even marry because your own father is wealthy. You want to do wedding, you don't have money to buy jackets. If people buy jacket for you, buy shoe for you, buy cow for you, buy bag of rice for you, and they wait for you, <laughs> we're dealing with crisis tranquilizers or crisis management. So we're going to be looking at number four, which is making decisions together. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. The Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? One of the greatest gifts you can give to your spouse is the ability to carry them along. Learn to discuss matters, learn to discuss issues. Now, in discussing matters, there have to be a high level of maturity on the, on the part of the, of, of the couples. You know, there are some people who are not matured enough to understand dreams and visions. There are some men who are scared of discussing visions with their wives, or discussing purposes with their wives, or discussing plans with their wives. Why? Because some of these women don't have enough capacity to handle mega projects or mega visions or mega, mega assignments or adventure. They are too scared for a life of adventure. The average man is an adventurous person. He likes discoveries. He likes creating waves. He likes breaking grounds. He likes setting records. That is the average man. Women, on the other end, love being on the safe side. So here you are discussing vision with them and they are scared about whatever the future may have. So there are some women you discuss cases with that discourage you. We must know the difference. In taking decisions together, there are certain characteristics or certain attitudes that must be dumped or be dropped. Number one, don't behave like the boss. Whether male or female, if you are making a decision that has got to do with financial involvement 
of financial implication. Don't behave like the boss in the name that you are the one bringing a chunk, a chunky part of the money or a more part in, of the money. Don't position yourself to be the boss. Don't boss the other party. Number two, don't ask questions in an abusive manner. You know, there are ways people ask questions that make the other party look like a child. When you're carrying up plans together, be conscious of the way you ask questions and the kind of questions you ask. The third thing you do is to bring in constructive suggestions. Don't impose decision on the other party. Whatever you are saying, let it be from the point of suggestion. Honey, what do you think if we do this this way? It's not because you don't have what to say or you don't know what to say. It means you are carrying each other along. But if all you do is to conclude and then you come to impose your conclusion on the other party, then it means you guys are not discussing together or deciding together. It means you've decided everything before bringing the other person on board. In such cases, we don't call it discussion. We call it information. Number four, think it through. Any decision you want to make that you don't have a clear light about, don't rush into it. Sit down with your spouse. Okay, fine. We cannot conclude today. Let's keep this thing till tomorrow. You can even give yourself assignments. Say so you go make your research on this particular matter. Make your research on this particular project. Make your research on this particular assignment. Let me go make my own research. As a man, your best business partner is your wife. The joy of that is, as you mentor her, she mentors your children. Succession planning comes and stays and succeeds where the man mentors the wife and the both mentor their children or the woman in giving back to the husband mentors the children number five discuss finances together money matters matters greatly in marriages even in relationship most courtship have come to an end for lack of money more than satanic attack when there is no money in the marriage, there is always tension. The man is scared of talking because he has nothing to give to the wife. The woman is scared of talking because he wouldn't want the man to feel that she's looking down on him. The children are frustrated. They wish their dad was that uncle or their mom was that aunt. So by the end of the day, a home that is ravaged with poverty is tensed up. Children find their ways the way they want to find their way. The woman has desires that she cannot express herself. The man cannot rebuke the wife because he has nothing it takes to take care of the wife. So everybody is independent. It becomes like a no man's city. Have the children survive, the parents don't, don't want to know anymore. As long as they come back alive, they can go and survive. The woman goes out, makes money and come back. The man can ask her, how did you get this money? And somehow the man goes, borrow money or begin to live at the expense of a lady outside. The woman cannot ask, how did they make this money? Why? Because they feel that the money is too needed in the family. The Bible speaks in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and the B part of verse 19. It says, money answered all things. In other words, the major questions of life are answered by money. The answer to house rent is money. The answer to school fees or good education is money. Quality life, comfortable life can only be sponsored by money. Somebody shout money. So you can't damn play money when it comes to having a successful, happy family. Discuss your finances together. What are the things you discuss in your finances? Discuss what you do and how much you earn. And that has to begin from the courtship level. Don't tell a lady you want to marry that you are earning 500,000 naira when your salary is just 25,000. Don't impress any lady with mentioning huge amount of money. Somebody say it's a life of faith. That is not faith. That is fake. What is faith? Faith is my salary is 25,000, but I believe God that in the next six months I will get a better job where I'll be earning 500,000 naira. Let her know. Because if you don't tell her, she's going to demand more than what you have. And when she don't get it, she's going to start frowning. It's like you have the money, you don't want to take care of your wife. If it's not there, let each other know that it's not there. Then you begin to work out plans on how to generate money and make money. Now, in every marriage, there are two categories of people. We have the spender and the saver. In most marriages, the husbands are the spenders. The wives are the savers. 
There is nothing wrong with that. Because you can keep hiding money and not advance in life. If you invest judiciously and invest constructively, definitely you will advance. So the question is, how do you channel, how do you help that man? Find out who the saver is and find out who the spender is. Now when you find out who the saver is, leave more money with that person. If the husband is the one who is the saver, then let more money be in his account than your own. If the wife is the one who is the saver, then let more money be in her account than your own. The next thing you do in discussing your financial matters is you don't hide debts. If you're indebted, let your spouse know. You see, nothing is as embarrassing as you staying in a home and somebody knocks at the door of your house. Come, come, come. Yes, who is that? You open the door. Say, why are you banging at my door? What's wrong with you? How can you come and just be hitting somebody's door? Is it your house? And the person said, when you finish shouting, give me my money. You say, what money? You say, well, your husband is owing me money. Call him, let him come and give him my money. You that was shouting and bragging and, you know, raising your shoulder, but as soon as, before you open your eyes, the shoulder will just collapse. Don't hide debts. If you have one, let each other know. And then let each other know what it was used for. The third thing you need to do in discussing your finances is that in as much as you believe in having combined savings or you believe in savings you must also give your partner the liberty to have what we call independent money now this independent money is what you use for your little little spendings you don't strip your husband off of finances in the name that you want to save same thing you don't strip your wife off of finances in the name that you want to teach her how to save money when you have paid your tithe and kept whatever you need to keep for house home um, things maybe toiletries feeding and the rest and you want to make some saving drop some savings there is nothing wrong with that but have some little finances some independent money just give it to the man say take go and spend it makes him feel like a man it makes him feel that okay it's not laboring in vain it makes him feel that it's not suffering because it's possible to have five million in your account and you are still suffering then in planning your finances also plan your extended family members particularly your parents it is wickedness for you to have enough to take care of yourself take care of your family and then you don't take care of your parents create an amount of money that leaves you every month at least once every month to go to your parents don't let anybody deceive you if you can give it to your servant to your prophet either your pastor or your pastor's wife you should give to your parents more are you understanding me Never you allow any fake prophet or useless prophet confuse you or turn you against your parents. Even if your mother is a witch, take care of her. God will take care of things. If your father is wicked and is a wizard, take care of him. God will take care of things. Thus, I will not send money to my mom. She will bewitch me. Who says so? If your mom was a witch, you would have been eaten from the womb. If you manage to survive from the womb, you won't survive the first five years. If your mom were to be a witch, you couldn't have gone through the university successfully and graduated alive. She would have donated your sins to witchcraft more than they ate you. I beg you, husband, if you're sending money to your mother, remember your mother-in-law. If you're sending money to your father, remember your father-in-law. What is good for the geese that says good for who? So balance it very very important in bringing solution dealing with crisis a relationship or bringing the tranquilizers learn to create time for each other somebody say time for each other your marriage did not stop at the wedding and ended at the wedding your marriage started at the wedding and continued through the wedding you don't say because i'm married right now i don't have time for my wife no you must create time for her get to know how she feels get to know what she's going through Understand her pains, her struggles, and her battles. Get to understand it. How much she's handling the children. What's her day like? What was her work like? Find out. Same thing with the woman. Don't say, hey, praise the Lord. I'm finally married right now. I don't care what happens. And you abandon your husband. You don't care whether he fits or not. You're not concerned about his, sexual, his sexuality. You're not bothered about the battles that he's facing at work. You only is that end month has ended. Please bring me the money. One thing about marriage is people are married and yet heartbroken. You know what that means? They are married. 
what made them to step into the marriage they no longer see it your husband didn't just marry you because he needed a wife he married you because there were certain traits and certain characters that he saw that he liked there were many women you were the only one he got married to because of those traits and those characters if you are married and those traits disappear and the character disappear you know what he will look for it if he does not find it in you and he finds it somewhere else he may not marry that person but the character will attract him away from you that is why whatever it takes or whatever it took your husband to marry you develop it a hundred times to keep him same thing with the man what did that thing your wife saw in you that made him to say yes when there are several other men you were not the only suitor but there was something unique about you that she saw and she told you that this is the reason why she's saying yes to you and not saying yes to the other guys if after marriage that thing begins to miss she will look for it